thank you, Madam uh, Acting Madam uh, Deputy <laughs> Chair. Um, yeah, it's quite a bit off guard there. Yeah, look, we're talking about uh, broken promises. Uh, I want to first touch on the whole aged care issue, which I think is worth uh, noting. Uh, we were promised that there would be nurses 24-7 in aged care homes, I think, by June 30 this year. That hasn't happened. Uh, the Minister, Annika Wells, isn't prepared to actually state uh, when, uh, you know, or even give a figure, or even give a figure as to what, what the number of aged care centres that do have uh, full-time nurses. I, I'm personally not in favour of the policy in the sense that my view is if that someone is sick, they should go to hospital. I think it makes it very confusing uh, when you've got aged care centres acting as as uh, nursing homes as well. I think there needs to be a clear delineation. I accept it's not an easy thing to solve. Uh, but that was a promise that was made by Albanese, uh, sorry, the Labor government, the Prime Minister uh, Anthony Albanese and the Labor government, and it's a promise that I don't think they're serious about keeping. Uh, and you know, the least that they could do, yet again, as I spoke about this this morning, is at least give us a figure uh, as to how many nurses are, you know, full-time nurses, uh, nurses are in aged care centres on a full-time basis, 24 hours a day basis. Uh, so that we can gauge the performance of the uh, Labor Albanese government. And I think it's very disappointing that the, the uh, aged care minister, Annika Wells, won't answer that question. So that's, that's one thing that we could talk about in terms of broker promises and accountability. Uh, the other thing that I've found very annoying is the release of the uh, National Cabinet minutes. Uh, I, uh, uh, the Prime Minister again, the current Prime Minister again, when he was opposition leader, said that he would release the minutes of national cabinet, and he, you know, used that to uh, wedge the Morrison government. And I myself was never a fan of national cabinet, and I also thought the minutes should be released when uh, we're in government. So, you know, yet again, it's a case of saying one thing in opposition and another thing in government. And I think the Albany this is another example of where the Albanese government. It's not a hard thing to do. Uh, I'm sure these these meetings aren't that detailed, or it's that difficult to have a secretary in there to actually take the minutes. Yet they refuse to release the minutes. And wh why is this so hard? Why can't we have greater transparency uh, as to what goes on between the federal and state governments? I mean, federal, uh, the federal government pays billions of dollars a year in transfer payments to state governments, and I think we've got a right to know uh, how how this money is distributed uh, and, and the the reasons behind it and, and, and the wrangling. Of course, then we move to the cost of living issues, uh, and of course we never saw power prices. Uh, decreased by $275. As a matter of fact, they're up by about $700 uh, as at the last budget. And just last week, we see the retailers, energy retailers, saying that they're going to up uh, energy prices again coming into the new financial year of between 28 to 30 per cent. That is enormous. That is enormous. And uh, you know, a another reckless statement, given that there is a massive energy transmission. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, transfer from you know, reliable, cheaper baseload energy to renewables. Um, another broken promise or, or lack of transparency is I know when uh, uh, an earlier set of estimates, I've asked the uh, Environment Minister or the, you know, the Acting Environment Minister, Senator McAllister, in estimates, uh, just how many kilometres of transmission lines do we need to reach 82 per cent of renewables by 2030? And the department just couldn't even answer that question. They have no idea. Uh, of how many kilometres of transmission lines uh, are needed for, uh, to reach 82 per cent of the grid. And I think it's absolutely absurd that you're going to legislate uh, to get to 43 per cent reduction in CO2 by 2030, and, and of which to reach that you've got to reduce uh, baseload energy or get, get renewable energy up to 82 per cent of the grid, and you can't actually say how many kilometres of transmission lines you need to do it. I mean, at least get you know some idea, have a plan. I mean, I can't even get a plan uh, out of the out of, out of the Albanese government. Uh, and the last thing, and, and this isn't necessarily broken promise or transparency, but I will have a crack at the prime minister because he had a crack at me for moving a motion uh, to get the RAC committee to have a look into the regional banking inquiry. Uh, and you know, he, this bloke doesn't even know me. He doesn't know anything about my past or you know my passion for regional services, and he's he's dared me into uh, you know, saying, I won't do anything for regional banks. Well, let me tell you right here, right now, I'm going to be pushing for a, an old-fashioned public bank, 
pork eating sold to CBA. I want a new public bank. I want a state government insurance office or a federal government insurance office, and I want the Commonwealth government to offer interest-free bonds in lieu of superannuation. So I'll hold him to it. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.